Okay, I'm going to click on the I and I'm going to go to New. And this is Holes Part 2. And we're going to pick PLTWC just because I need a bigger sheet of paper for this thing to, to fit on. So Holes is the project name, date is whatever it should be. And the file name, you know, whatever you want it to be. Tell it OK. For my base view, I'm going to use my top view because I'm actually going to create a sectional view. So I'm going to put in my base view. I'm going to right click, tell it OK. I'm going to go to section. I'm going to click on the block. And then I'm going to bring my cursor to this side. And you'll see a green dot. That's the midpoint of that line. I'm going to track my mouse out. I'm not clicking. When it's sticking out about a quarter of an inch, I'm going to click. I'm going to drag it straight across. I'm going to let it stick out again. I'm going to click. Then I'm going to right click and pick continue. And I'm going to drag down the sectional view. Okay. Now I want a sectional isometric over here, so I'm going to click on projected. I'm going to click on this view right here, and I'm going to drag it over just like I was making a regular isometric. I'm going to right click and I'm going to press create. Now to make this look normal, I'm going to double click on it. And see right here, this is uh, scale from base. We actually want to change the scale, so we're going to turn that off and put in 0.75. We want this colored, so I'm going to turn off that and I'm going to pick this style. And now I have a nice, neat little isometric to go up in that corner. And now I'm going to space these guys out because with the dimensioning, it's I'm going to need a lot of space. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to hit Escape. And this section note here, I'm going to drag it all the way out so it's out of my way. Then I'm going to do basic dimensioning, clicking here, getting the overall length. Not okay. Get the overall height. Get the overall depth, which you have to get from your top view. I'm going to do it over here. Get this height here. And get this distance down here. Now the next one Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom up on my holes. I'm going to use hole and thread note to do these. So I'm going to click on this guy and I'm just going to click and drag the number out. Remember your leader line, which is the one with the arrowhead, has to be on some sort of angle. It can't be straight up and down or straight across. The next one is where things get interesting. Because if you look at my measurements, they do not look like that. It says 0 .500. I need to change the tolerance on this. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to tell it OK. Then I'm going to double click on the number. I'm going to click on precision and tolerance. I'm going to turn off global. And I'm going to change this to three decimal places. Tell it OK. Now it's correct. I'm going to do the same thing on the next hole. And once again, we have to right click, tell it OK, double click, precision and tolerance, turn off global, three decimal places, three decimal places, OK. And now it looks correct. Moving on to the next one. Click, right click, OK, double click on it, precision and tolerance, Turn off global, change all of them to three. That's your diameter, your depth of your hole, your counterbore, and your depth of your counterbore. Okay, tell it OK. The next one is your countersink. Same deal here, guys. This one comes down. Right click, OK. Double click. Precision and tolerance. Turn off global, change everything except the degree. We don't mess with degrees. Okay. Now the next one wants us to add in a note about the minor diameter. This is pretty odd, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. You're going to click, you're going to right click, tell it OK, double click on the number. Put your cursor here 
and we're going to go to this drop down menu and we're just going to insert the symbol for diameter put in 0.458 type in through and press return so that it makes two lines tell it OK and now yours should look just like mine I'm going to go to the next guy This guy also needs a minor diameter and precision to be changed. So let's do precision and tolerance first. Turn off global, primary, change all of that, and OK. Put your cursor here, and we're going to type in, we're going to use the diameter symbol. 0 0.320 we're gonna put a space then we're gonna add the depth symbol which is right here put in a space 1.500 and once again we're gonna press enter to move this to a second line tell it OK and that should be what yours looks like and the next one is going to be another fun one that we have to edit. Okay, so right click, OK, double click. First thing we're going to do is change our precision, turn off global, change all of these. Tell it OK. Put your cursor here diameter symbol point 0.428 space depth symbol space 1.500 enter so it ends up on three lines and this one we may need to just pull up just a little bit next guy should just be an easy one where we just have to change the tolerance right click OK double click precision and tolerance okay. and I'm going to pan over just a little bit OK hole and thread come on up here this guy's metric and we're going to OK, precision and tolerance. And on this one, change it to 3, leave the uh, degree alone, tell it OK. And we're going to have to add something to this one. So we're going to use our diameter symbol. Oops, diameter symbol. We're going to put in 0.402 through. Hit enter. Tell it OK. And it didn't break that up for me. So we're going to go back into it. And tell it OK. There we go. And that is correct hole and thread one more time okay and this one's just changing the tolerance so right click okay precision and tolerance turn off global And there you go. So there are your dimensions. There's one other thing we need to do, and that's center lines. And I, this guy here is bugging me because he's, like, touching the border. So I'm going to move him. There we go. So center lines, go. you're under annotate. The one that looks like a plus sign goes on all the ones in the top view. Just click on every single circle, just like that. On the ones where it's showing two circles because you have a counter bore or something, just click on the bigger one. I'm going to pan a little bit. Okay. And now 
we are going to do the centerline bisectors in the front view. This one is centerline bisector. Click the two outside lines of every hole. If you're doing a counter bore, you get the counter bore line and you get the smaller line. Same thing with a counter sink. On this guy, I'm just going to get these two lines here. When it has threads and the threads don't go all the way through, you do what you can. Okay, so we're going to pan again. Center line bisector. We get these two outside guys and the countersink itself. Okay, two outside guys. And now it's got center lines. Okay, so now you're done. To print it, you're going to go to I, print. You're going to make sure you're using the 5430. You're going to use best fit and it's going to shrink this giant drawing to fit on your page. Okay. Thank you guys. See you later.